Hi there and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to show you how to use the magic cut tool in Photopea, which is one of the many tools that enables you to cut out objects within an image. Now we'll be covering others in separate videos. It's going to be part of a mini series on cutting out and selecting um, elements in photos. But for the moment, we're going to concentrate on the magic cut. So as you can see, I've got this image already loaded in, which is available in the description box for download. And we're just going to use this as an example. So to access the magic cut tool, make sure you've got your image layer highlighted. Go up to the select menu and you'll see here about halfway down this is magic cut. So select it from the menu and it will bring up a new screen. Now we can move this around if you've got the hand tool on you can click here or if you're on another tool you can hold down the space bar to temporarily move to the hand tool and then click and drag and you can just reposition this in the view and you can zoom in and out in, in the normal way you would do in Photopea. So control or command plus or minus all these buttons up here. So this main view, you've got two sides of the view. You've got the left hand side, which you can see is the full, which is the original image with some red and green markings on it. And then you've got the right hand side. So the right hand side image is showing you the results so far of the cutout. And if you go up here to the top left of the menu, sorry, the top right of the menu, you can choose three options for the background preview. Transparent checkerboard, plain white, or plain black, just so you can check it against different backgrounds. Um, but I'm just gonna keep white on for the moment. So how this works is you've got green, red, and a gray swatch you can pick from here in the top left. And this is to tell Photopea what areas of it you want to retain, and what areas you want to be removed. So you can see it automatically fills in some as a starting point based on its analysis of the image. So it's got a red line across the background around the edge and it's put a green, some green markings on her. And you can see it's, before we've even done anything else, it started off with quite a good cutout. But you see there's like a piece under her arm here. So how, how the tools work is you click say green for example, which is to what you want preserving. You paint this in what you want to preserve. Now, as you can see here, we don't have to paint very much and it will intelligently figure out, try to figure out what areas um, of that subject are similar enough to there to retain. So for example, if I want to remove this bit under her arm here that I can see on the right hand side preview and it hasn't been cut out, I go to the red tool because the red is for areas you want to remove and the green is for areas you want to keep. And so I'm going to take it down to the gap. You have to work, you have to work on the left-hand side image. And all I'm going to need to do is just click to do a tiny dot or just a little stroke. And on the right-hand side, you'll see it's now identified that all of that area needs to be removed. But it's gone a little bit too far and removed the piece of her arm here. So no problem. We go to the green and we just do the same thing. We just do a little dot. You don't have to draw over the whole area just enough to give Photopea a taste of what kind of colors and tones it should be looking for in the immediate area to try and um, retain or remove. So that's worked really well on that. Um, now, one thing to note on this, if you make a mistake and you want to remove that, don't paint on it with the opposite color because it won't work. It'll actually give you an error message. So if I paint green on top of that red dot to sort of say if I wanted to add that back in, it'll come with an error message saying red and green should never touch because it confuses the system and it just gives it a really bad result. So if you made a mistake, just choose the gray brush in the middle, the gray swatch, and that will effectively, um, that will effectively neutralize the colors and you paint over it. Okay. So there we go. It'll just neutralize it. But in this sense, let's revert back because we did want to remove that. So again, just go red, just click a little bit of red there. Job done. And because we put a green dot up here, it's got the background. We'll get the error message again. So we need to just go to gray, get rid of those and basically get the image back to where it was. So if we zoom in, we can see that it's done a fairly good job without any work really, without well, with hardly any work. The edge is quite jagged though. If we zoom in quite a lot, we can see that the edge is quite pixelated. 
and also when it gets around to the hair it's again got a very jagged edge and the finer hair details not been not been encapsulated so we've got one last feature here which can help with these edges and it's called the border parameter so let me just zoom in again sorry for jumping all over the place with the zoom so you come back up to the top menu there's this there's this box here called border now what this is doing is it's telling you or is it's telling photo b to look on the the edge of the cutout areas and you can specify a border where it'll almost run like a refine edge type um effect to try and help to um just help to cut out the edges a little bit more appropriately so it's not the same as feathering it won't just apply general feather so let's start off with something like two or three and now watch the edge of a hair on the right hand side shot you see all of a sudden we've got a much smoother nicer looking cutout now you'll see it's still not completely cut out as it would do on the refine edge tool because you know we've got still got the blue background showing but if we compare that to zero where it was at the start it really needs up that edge now you can but notice it's not applying a feather or anything so all the edges that should be sharp remain sharp but nice not jagged just as they should be um, with a quite a small border now if we go higher and higher with the border if we go say to 20 you'll notice the hair look even better take it a minute to recalculate see it change there let me zoom in you can see it's still got that tinge of blue if we take it to something like 50 in this example it'll actually see that it's added it's difficult to see because of this but it's added and it's encapsulated more area of the fine hair detail there because we've essentially told it to look in a 50 pixel um radius i think it works 20 like half either side so in this case 25 pixels inside and outside of the of the edge for it to try and intelligently figure out what else to what else to cut out nicely so you can see up here on the hat it's actually bringing a little bit of this border in by having that sorry a bit, little bit of the framing by having the border value so high so it worked great for the hair not so great for this area up here so maybe let's let's just compromise and let's just type 30 and see if we can get it to the best way if not that is a super easy fix um to just brush out manually after the fact so um let's zoom back out and let's say okay we've got the model cut out let's say now we do want this frame on the left hand side of the shot we want to include that in the cutout elements so as you can see here photo P's defaulted a red line around the top and down the side so it's automatically detected that that background should be removed but let's say we didn't want that particular area of the background removed so what we do is we go to the gray tool which neutralizes the color and we're just going to erase the red line from the, just this sort of paneling on the left hand side it's supposed to be like a window effect and let's just stop removing it when it gets to the blue background because we we still want the blue removed so what you'll hopefully see here if we just tap a little bit of green on this area to say yep yeah, we want that to be retained you see it's automatically added in a big chunk of that not all of it but a good chunk we've only done a little bit so now it's just a case of dotting the green in areas closer to where it's not picking them up but making sure not to go onto the blue you can see maybe there's a little area up here and it'll get the frame That's just, we might need to erase, let me zoom in, we might just need to erase that a tiny bit more red from that black bar up here. Yeah, there we go. And as you can see, it's actually done a really good job of cutting out, because we've got the border set high, 
it's cut out the frame, but also there's a very sort of like shadow on the original frame, and it's actually cut that out as well. So if I put that, if I change the preview to the grid and zoom in, you can see how it's sort of got this semi-transparent bit down the side on the left that was there on the original. It's actually retained the cutout of that shadow, which is nice. So now we've got a good cutout of the model and we've also kept that sort of screen object in the cutout as well. Whereas if we'd used another method like select subject, which I'll cover in another video, it would have only honed in on the um, woman in this case. So before we click OK, we've got a few options here. We can, ex we can save it as a new layer with a raster mask or a selection. Now, to me, it always makes sense to do a raster mask because then you can edit it afterwards. So that's just a layer mask, basically. So we'll click OK, happy with that. And now you'll see we have it as our as our selection on a new layer. And we can now put a different background behind it. We can do whatever you'd need to do with the cutout image, which depends on your own, your own projects. So if we just quickly drag that behind it, you see we've got quite a nice cutout um, on a new background. And we can just do whatever we want with that. Now, one other tip is if the cutout after the fact is a little bit like this, it's still got a bit of contamination and it's not perfect. Like up here, you can see along the brim of the hat looks a little bit transparent. If you hold the Alt key and click on your layer mask, and this is why I chose to do it on a rasterized mask, it will give you a, a look at the edges. Now, what you want to look for for a nice clean layer mask it's like this solid objects shouldn't have light or gray areas around the edge. They should be solid white and then go into solid black. So if I zoom in here, you see on these creases how it's got like a bit of a hazy gray detail. That's where the border um, parameter in the magic cut has just kind of tried to blend the edge in a little bit too much to the point where it's actually making those areas a little bit transparent. So on the main image, any areas like that um, will actually start to show the background through a bit. And like on the brim of the hat here. Now you could go in with a white brush and just paint this out. But here's a little tip. If you go to the dodge tool, which is this one down here and set the range to highlight and the exposure to just guess yeah, something less than a hundred. Definitely. Now what happened is when you paint over this area, it's going to brighten, but bear in mind, we're only on the, we're editing the layer mask here, not the image. It's going to brighten everything that's already bright. Now, even though these areas are darker, it's still not black. So it's going to ignore anything that's completely black. And it's just going to lighten everything that's not black. So basically, we can just go around the edge of the layer mask with this. And it's going to... We can reduce the hardness of the brush, of course. And it's gonna um, just start to neaten up any of those little ghosted gray areas that would end up being sort of semi-transparent on the original image. I don't know how well you can see this on the YouTube video by the time it's compression, everything's kicked in, but there's like a smudgy gray detail along the edge of this layer mask. So this is an easy way to just go in and fix that. Um, fix that by hand and you can see here hair is a little bit different because you want the strands of hair to be a little bit transparent inwards otherwise it's just gonna look like a solid block of color but anything that should be a hard edge like this this is a good tip to just quickly go around it and neaten up these edges okay so the only thing seen is still retain the nice details of little fuzzy bits of um, fiber on the hat now the only thing that's still really bothering me about this is the hair. We've got a contaminated bit of hair, so it's transparent. It's got the transparency, but it's got a bit of color contamination in it. Now that's super easy to fix. All we do is create a blank layer above our cutout layer, hold the Alt key and click on that layer, and it'll, it'll clip it to the layer below. So now it'll only affect the pixels on the layer below. We'll change the blend mode to color, Press B for our brush tool, hold the Alt key and click somewhere 
around the hair that's not contaminated to pick the color from it make our brush a bit bigger and then you can just paint over the area of contaminated hair and it would just it would just color it as per the surrounding hair so you're just basically painting over with more of her real hair color just to kind of paint over the contamination which was just from the background of the original shot and that is the magic cut tool i hope this was really useful and of course as always if you like the video give it a thumbs up leave a comment and subscribe if you think you want to see more like this in the future